Coach, it's been 50 days since you landed in Tucson and you've been the head coach of the University of Arizona football team. How do you sum up Tucson to someone who's never been here? Well, it's beautiful. I mean, it is a special place uh, as we sit out here and overlooking the stadium behind us and the beautiful downtown area. And it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And since I've been here, I've kind of, I've learned so much about the university that it's, that it's a cent the city and the, the really the area of Tucson is all really surrounding the, the university mm -hmm. and the university is a nucleus of this and it's a special place to be. Mm -hmm. I know you've answered this question, but to answer it, the, the first reaction when you get the phone call, the one, one you've been waiting for, for your entire professional coaching career, what was your reaction? Uh, elation, um, I would say, I don't want to use the word relief, but mm -hmm. you know, you always feel like, is this going to happen? When will this happen? Um, is this going to be an opportunity that actually does present itself? And um, when it did, when, when Dave called and told me, you know, I want you to be the next head coach at the University of Arizona, um, it was a special call, and it was, Amber said, are you sure? I walked up to Amber, I go, we just got the job. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I think so. And she goes, can you put them on speakerphone? And uh, it's kind of been that, that moment ever since, and I feel that way every morning that I wake up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is amazing. And uh, the elation that I felt when I got the call is the same elation that I feel each morning. Your Twitter game has been out of this world. Everyone mentions it. What's been the strategy on social media when it comes to tweeting all the gifts and just being so interactive? Why is that up on your list? You know, it started um, the first week uh, when Jimmy Doherty came to town and we didn't announce him yet on the staff. And I said, hey, let's take a quick picture. And I go, well, just take, take a picture, say nothing, but it'll be a picture from Tucson. <laughs> and you, it started getting some reaction like, is that Coach Doherty or... Where was he at last? Is he mm -hmm. now? We knew he was going to join the staff, you know, and make it. And then I was like, wait, we have some fun ways to interact. Um, there's really one or two ways that you could release a story, right? You mm -hmm. could release it through the media or you could release it yourself. And as I was going through this process, I was saying, you know what would be cool? If we released it, mm -hmm. you know, if we, if we shared with our fan base, because they're the people following Arizona football mm -hmm. first, um, and let them know what's happening. And that's kind of how we started playing some games with the gifts and the releases and then almost telling a story with Twitter on what's happening. You have so many stories that you could just take out of your back pocket when it comes to your coaching career and your college years. Is there a story that sticks out that you love telling? I think the story that I always end up telling mm -hmm. is how it all started. The story that I love telling is you know, that every move that I made, I was able to learn something from someone else. Mm -hmm. That every decision to pick up our family was not an easy decision. I think sometimes it gets lost in that, oh, he just wanted to move to go mm -hmm. somewhere. But there was always a reason behind it. It has always been to learn from someone else, to have one more experience in something different than what I was currently doing to provide me and my family the opportunity to be sitting here today. Mm -hmm. And um, there were times throughout that it was the most devastating day in the world that we had to pick up and move, not by our choice. Um, there were other times that we had to have the tough discussion with the person that we were working for and tell them that we were moving. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of it has, has worked out in a manner that I'll never say that I haven't learned from the next stop. You've been to the Waste Management Open, up in Phoenix, the entire coaching staff has toured campus. Um, you've done a lot in the first 50 days. What was first to check off your list when you got here? The goal was to try to connect with as many people as we could. Um, within the first week, I was able to go uh, to Coach Miller's office, mm -hmm. go spend some time with Sean, to connect with our football alumni. Mm -hmm. That's been a huge part. Um, from the very beginning, that was emphasized. You know, what type of relationship are you gonna have with the people that played here before? Mm -hmm. and um, and that's not talking about the coaches we've hired that's talking about the guys that aren't in Tucson right now mm -hmm. or that um, are really a part of that still want to be a part of this program and then there's a fundraising aspect to this job where you have to really try to make sure that we try to keep our facilities up to par we want to try to give our players the best opportunities they mm -hmm. can retain coaches 
And then the final part of it is the coaching, which is, as we all know, the most important part because that's the part that we have to make sure that we get right. One of the maybe the most daunting task, hiring an entire staff to help lead a, a football program with you. Something you haven't done yet, but you've been a part of. What went into the decision making to bring back the All-Americans and just who you picked to be on the staff? Yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely a process. We've, we've hired 37 people um, from December 28th when the process began till today um, with actually our last two hires coming in Monday. Uh, and with that, we had to make a decision of not just building a coaching staff, but you have to build an entire football department, uh, recruiting, personnel, uh, social media, digital, the operations department, my own personal um, chief of staff and assistant athletic director for football administration. Um, yeah, it had the then analysts and graduate assistants and then a whole recruiting department. Mm -hmm. So when you start adding all those up and you start seeing, wow, we have to get to this and that and, and, and continue to build this program, that was daunting. Mm -hmm. uh, that was also the most fun because when you're interviewing all of these different people, you're learning from the interview, not just, you're not just calling, offering, calling, offering, calling, mm -hmm. offering, you're interviewing and you're making sure you get the right fit for our program and what we're trying to do and how we're trying to get it done. Um, but with that being said, uh, we were very fortunate that there was a lot of yeses when we asked, mm -hmm. if, do you want to come? Um, and that, that's a huge part of it, right? Because you want people that want to be here. What do you want people to know about Tucson, about the University of Arizona football team, now that you've been able to be here on the ground, live it, breathe it every single day? It's a special place. Uh, it has unbelievable history. and. What, what you learn about is those 1990 teams that were the desert swarm, that the defenses were just dominant, the opportunity to go 12-1 and 1 in 1998, the teams that literally gave up no point week in, week out, the team that played the number one team in the country two weeks in a row at Miami and Washington, you know, lost 8-7 to seven against Miami, then came back and beat Washington, who was number one. You learn about all the great things that Arizona football, you know, once had, in regards to wins and losses mm -hmm. and regards to the competitive edge. And it's like, we gotta get it back. And the city of Tucson is dying for it. And the university is craving it. Mm -hmm. So if we can get our guys um, to get back to that level of play, to be able to be the type of program and type of team that wants to go out there and play at the highest level and just compete um, the way the Teddy Bruskies of the world did, the way the Ricky Hunleys of the world, the Chuck Cecils, the Brandon Sanders, guys that we brought back to our staff to remind those guys of what it looked and felt like. Um, Keith Smith, the quarterback that took them in 1998 to the championship, guys that are Hall of Famers and Ring of Honor members. Um, we got to find that, bring that back, and, and find a way to get to the Rose Bowl. What's the first thing on your list next 50 days? Football. <laughs> It's been a lot of non-football, mm -hmm. of organization, of structure, of fundraising, of recruiting. Signing day was just two weeks ago. The next 50 days will be a major focus in the game. We've got spring ball coming up. We've got clinics coming up. We have uh, preparation for a ton of meetings mm -hmm. to get our offense and defenses installed, to start preparing a, to get a high level of special teams. So we have to do a great job with the football side of it between now and April 24th, which is our spring game.